Good day viewers, today we are going to cover financial reporting FR from ACCA September December 2015. Today we are going to cover question number three from this question paper. I encourage you to download this question paper so that you will be able to follow along and also read the question number three in advance so that you will be able to move together. Let's go to the required of question number three. We are going to ask to answer this for 25 marks. Prepare the consultative statement of financial position for Palista as at 30 June 2015. I hope you have uh, read the question. So what we are going to do, we are going to do few workings before we answer the question. So let's read paragraph one. On 1 January 20. 15. Palista acquired 75% of stretcher equity shares by means of an immediate share exchange of two shares in Palista for five shares in stretcher. That's the date of acquisition, January 2015. The date of reporting is 30 June 2015. So we'll say January, February, March, April, May, June. It's a mid-year acquisition. It's a six months mid-year acquisition. So we are going to take note of that. The fair value of Palista and Stretcher's shares on 1 January 2015 were $4 and $3 respectively. We are going to use this $4 to calculate the consideration and also use this $3 to calculate the NCI. In addition to the share exchange, Palista will make a cash payment of $1.5. 3.2 per acquired share deferred until 1 January 2016. So this it will be deferred for only one year. Palista has not recorded any of the consideration for stretcher in its financial statements. Palista's cost of capital is 10% per annum. Now let's work out the share exchange. Palista purchased 75%. 75% of 20,000 equity multiplied by the basis we are told is 2 for every 5. So we say multiply by 2 divided by 5, then multiply by the share price of $4. We get that. Then now the deferred um, payment we are given is $1.32 per share. So how many shares we acquired? 75% multiplied by 20,000 multiplied by $32. As this will be deferred for one year, so we we'll divide by 1.1. That is 1 plus the, the cost of capital or interest rate to the power 1, of which is like that. Then we multiply by that. Then if we have found our deferred payment, we need now to unwind the discount. To unwind the discount, we will not unwind the discount for the whole year, but we will unwind the discount only for six months. So the deferred payment is 18,000 multiplied by the interest rate or the cost of capital of 10% multiplied by 6 divided by 12 like that. So the finance cost or the unwinding of the discount is 900. That 900, we are going to use it uh, to adjust the parentheses retained earnings. Now let's calculate the NCI. If the parent has got 75%, then the NCI has the remaining 25% of 20,000. Then we multiply by the share price of the of the subsidiary of three we get fifteen thousand why are we multiplied by three there is a note here that says palista's policy is to value non-controlling interest at fair value at the date of acquisition for this purpose treasure's share price at the, that date is representative of the fair value of the shares held by the non-controlling interest so that's why we are multiplying by three now let's move on to our net assets working our net assets working 
at acquisition share capital of the subsidiary is 20, at reporting is also 20. Retained earnings, this figure here, before acquisition is 14, after acquisition again is still 14. Then now we come to the profit for the year, is 10,000. But we are given the note here that Stretcher's business is seasonal and 60% of its annual profit is made in the period 1 January to 30 June. So 1 January, that's when the company was bought. So before that, 1 July to 31 December, it means the company makes 40% of the profit. So simply say 40% multiplied by the profit for the year, which is 4,000 that was made pre-acquisition. At acquisition, then at reporting, it's what? is 10,000 like that. Then now let's carry on. At the date of acquisition, the fair value of stretcher's net assets was equal to their carrying amounts with the following exceptions. An item of plant at a fair value of 2 million below its carrying amount. So at acquisition, it had a fair value of 2 million of which in thousands is 2,000 below its carrying amount. So if it was below its carrying amount, it means we need we also need to reverse excess depreciation. At the date of acquisition, it had a remaining life of two years. So we we'll simply say this divided by two, but since acquisition we only acquired this six months, so we we'll say multiply by six divided by twelve. So reverse 500 as excess depreciation. The fair value of stretcher's investment was 7 million C05. This is not 5. At 30 June, the fair values of the financial asset equity investment of Palisha and Stretcher were 13,200 and 7,000, 7.9 million respectively. Now we are shown here. It, at its carrying amount of six, so at acquisition it was seven less six thousand carrying amount. So there's a fair value adjustment of one thousand. Then now at reporting, the same financial asset is now seven thousand nine hundred, of which. It's shown at its carrying amount of 6,000. So there's a gain of 1.9 like that. Let's carry on. Stretcher owned the rights to a popular mobile cell phone game. At the date of acquisition, a specialist value who are estimated that the rights were worth 12 million and at an estimated life of five years. So we need to recognize that intangible at its fair value of 12 and we need to amortize that over five years but now we have only acquired this six months ago so we we'll multiply by six like that then here we have to be very careful we have measured the NCI at fair value. If we have measured the NCA at the proportionate share of net assets, we were not going to include impairment under our net assets list here. So just because we are measuring the NCI at fair value, we are including our goodwill impairment here. As if the NCI is measured at fair value, it means it has got a share of the goodwill impairment. But if it is measured at the proportionate share of net assets, it does not have the share of goodwill. So everything that goes to the net assets list, it should be shared between the parent and the, subs and the NCR. So we are told here that the impairment was 3 million, of which in thousands, that's 3,000. Then we can sum up our net assets list. Then to get the post acquisition, we say 52,200 minus 49. The post acquisition profits is 3,200. 
Let's carry on. Note number four. Poster sells goods to stretcher at cost plus 30%. Stretcher had 1.8 million of goods in inventory at 30 June 25th, which had been supplied by Palist. So we need to remove PAP on these goods. In addition, on 28 June 2015, Palista processed the sale of 800,000 of goods to Stretcher, which Stretcher did not account for until the receipt, until their receipt on 2 July 2015. So these were goods in transit, but also the goods in transit, they had the pub in them. So what we are going to do, we are going to say 1.8 million, let me put brackets. We're going to say 1.8 million plus the goods in transit multiplied by 30 divided by 130. We get the pub of 600. This pub, we are going to credit inventory and debit the retained earnings of the parent, which is the seller. Now let's continue. The in-transit reconciliation should be achieved by assuming the transaction had been recorded in the books of stretcher before the year end. That's what we've just done. At 30 June 2015, Palista had a trade receivable of 2.4. Palista is the parent, is a trade receivable of 2.4. The receivables are a debit as their current assets. So we need, we need to reverse this intra group receivable. Then we are also due from stretcher which had, which differed to the equivalent balance in stretcher's books due to the sale made on 28 June 2015. So <coughs> the goods in transit they were the ones that caused the difference so we need to debit the inventory of stretcher then we need to find out how much was their intercompany payables, of which it was 1,600 like that. So we are going to reduce payables or current liabilities by 1,600. We are going to reduce. <coughs> we are going to reduce <coughs> the receivables by 2,400 and add on inventory. 800 the goods in transit now let's go let's carry on at 30 june 2015 the fair value of the financial asset of the investment of palista and stretcher with 13.2 million and 7.9 million the 7.9 million we've already used it on the net assets list so now we are left with the 13200 so the investment for the parent is now 13.2 million of which is 13,200 in thousand but it's shown in the statement of financial position as 11,500. So there is a gain of 1,700, which is an investment income or the fair value adjustment on the investment, <coughs> equity investment. Now let's calculate goodwill. We have our consideration. Consideration is what was paid by the parent share exchange plus deferred payment. NCI, we have already calculated our NCI as 15. Net assets, well, at acquisition, we already have the 49 here at acquisition. What is left is for us to calculate goodwill at acquisition. We are told that the impairment is 3, so we are going to pick our impairment. Then we calculate the goodwill at the reporting date is 5,000 or 5 million like that. <coughs> now let's go to the retain, group retained earnings. We have as per accounts for the parent is 26,200 plus 24,000. The share of the subsidiary post acquisition, we have our post acquisition here of 3,200 of which we need to multiply by 75%. Then we have our finance cost or the unwinding of the discount, 900. We have the PAP 
as the parent is the seller, we also have got the investment income, the gain on the equity investment of the parent. Then we sum up to get the group retained earnings like that. Then we have NCI at acquisition, we calculated it here. Then the share of the sub 25% post acquisition 3.2 multiplied by 25% like that. Then we can sum up to get the value of the <coughs> NCI. Then now for PPE, we are taking these figures from the statement the statements of financial position, we have got 55,000 plus 28,600 plus to our net assets list, we have got the, plant, the decrease in the plant and equipment, we add on top of that the excess depreciation like that. We get that figure, then goodwill, we have already calculated goodwill here, is 5,000. Then the intangible, which is the mobile rights, let's go and check. We have got 12,000 here, of which we take away the amortization of that. Then the equity investment of the parent is no longer 11,500 and of the subsidiary is no longer 6. We take straight from our note number 5. The parent has got 13,200 plus the subsidiary has 7,900 like that. Then let's uh, go to inventory. Inventory for the parent is 17,000, for the sum is 15,400. But we need to add the goods in transit of 800. We need to subtract the PAP of 600, like that. Then receivables, 14,300 for the parent plus 10,500 for the subsidiary. We need to eliminate the intra group of 2.4. Then bank, we have 2,200 plus the subsidiary 1,600. Then we add to get the total assets. Now let's go to equity. Equity, we take the equity of the parent portion only. But... In this instance, there was a share exchange here. The share exchange was for 24,000, of which the share price was $4. But here, the nominal value is $1 share. So there is an element of a share premium here. So the, share, the, the, the nominal is dollar, so the share premium is three. So now we we'll simply say 24 multiplied by one dollar divided by four dollars, we get six thousand as the equity as the equity nominal values. Then we simply say 24 multiplied by three dollars divided by four. This is the premium. The premium is 18. So simply come here, down here, and say equity of the parent only. The parent is for 20,000 plus what was issued to acquire the subsidiary, that's 6,000. Then other components of equity, we have got 4,000. Plus, the share premium will add it on other components of equity. The share premium is 18,000, like that. Then the retained earnings, we have calculated the retained earnings of the parent here. 
Then NCI, we have already calculated the NCI balance here. Then we have got deferred payment as the non-current liability. The deferred payment is 18 plus the unwinding of the discount of 900. Then let's take our current liabilities for the parent is 25,800 plus for the sub is 18,100. Less we take away the intra group of 1,600 like that. Then from here we can add to see if our statement of financial position balances. It does balance. Thank you for watching guys. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and also liking and sharing the video links with your friends. Thank you for watching.